Hi, welcome to my third application, Savenge Cow. This one's uh, designed for site engineers, setting out engineers, land surveyors, anybody who works in the um, civil engineering, construction or mining dis disciplines. This app consists of um, uh, a number of procedures to do with setting out or surveying. Um, and I'll, I'll just go straight into it. What you're seeing here now is what you'll see on the home screen of your phone. This is what you'll see when you open the app up. If we go here, you'll see that th this is where all the procedures are kept. You just select one of these to uh, whichever procedure you want to use. And I'm just going to go through them and explain how they all work. OK, we go straight into it. Coordinates, geometry, A and B. OK, you'll see I've already put the coordinates into these boxes here because it saves time because I've got a virtual keyboard and just keying them in with a wireless mouse just seems to take forever. Um, <laughs> the first set of coordinates here is classed as a base station. So the next point coordinates here will, will every time you press calc will always disappear because they'll be worked out between this set of coordinates and this set of coordinates here but this set of coordinates doesn't change so it'll always be considered the base station and um, if I just press calc I'll show you exactly what I mean so I'll go calc that'll disappear ready for the next set of coordinates there which will be point two to be worked out from this set here these these are automatically well no they're not automatically saved you can save these coordinates as a base station and um, you can clear them and call them up when you clear them it resets the count back to zero. So when you go back, so when you go to print, for every new set, every new base station that you put in there, it will uh, start off at point one again. So you'll know where the changes are. So basically, that's what it does. It calculates the bearing and distance between two sets of coordinates, and you can change these set of coordinates at any time. So if I go to print, there's there there it is there. There's the bearing. There's the distance, and it will just keep listing them down there, one to n, n being the amount of points that you've got. And every time you change the base station, it will restart the count back at one again, so you know where they are. There's not too much to say about that, really. Um, so I'll go straight to the next uh, to the next point. Okay, coordinates geometry part B. We just go onto here. We go onto part B, and uh, basically this one is just uh, working out the coordinates with one one base station set of coordinates and the bearing and distance. So if you remember before, this is the bearing and the distance that we calculated before. So if I go calc, there's the coordinates from the next point from the previous coordinates there. And again, you can just keep putting the bearing and distances in there and it will just give you um, uh, the, the coordinates at that, at that point of bearing and distance is. So again, if we go to print, there's the coordinates there. And if we go back again, if you um, go clear, you can clear those again. And uh, oh, sorry, <laughs> I've gone straight straight back to B. If if you if you go back to here, you can um, just keep putting in the bearings and distances, and it will recalc them back from uh, point one. Um, just to go back to what I've just done there, if I go to the print page, okay, it shares the the, the A and B shares the same print page. So if you're using B where you're putting in the uh, bearings and distances to get the coordinates, make sure you go back to B because that's where you've just come from. But if you was on A and you go print, okay, make sure you go back to A. So that, basically that's it. They, they just share the same print page. It just saves a bit of space. And again, you can save, um, save the uh, coordinates if you want. So, so I can clear them. I can call them back up and they're there to be used at another time. Okay, back to home. We go to free station. The first thing I'm going to do, I'm not going to talk about any of this yet. We're going to go to info. Okay. <clears throat> right. Free station is, is when we set up set up at point X here, and we want to find out what the coordinates are. We've got two coordinated stations there, A and B. And we want to find out the coordinates of what our setup is here. So what we'll do is we'll set up at X and we'll measure the distance XA there. And we'll also measure the distance XB there. And we'll also measure the distance, uh, sorry, measure the angle XAB here to uh, get the coordinates at this point. Now, if we just go back to here, I've already loaded the coordinates in. So th this is the coordinates of station A, the coordinates of station B. This is the uh, the observed angle, XAB, and these are the observed, observed distances, XA and X, XB there. So XA and XB. If I go calc, and there we go. 
and we've got the coordinates here from uh, called AX and BX. I'll just go back to info and explain that a little bit there. So what it's done, it's actually worked the coordinates out from this station back to X. So that's going to be AX. And it's also worked the coordinates back here from B, BX, to this point here. And that's the differences between the two coordinates there. So we've got a millimetre there. So it's, it's basically nothing. And the, and the mean of those two is here. So it means, means out the two uh, sets of coordinates get a stronger fix there. But what I will mention is, is this angle here must be greater than 35 degrees. Even that's pushing it. Really, you want to be around about 40 to 45 degrees minimum. So if you are getting below this, this, this angle here, just push your station up a little bit further here to widen out the angle to get a, to get a stronger fix. OK, basically, that's free station there. Um, uh, and just loading in the coordinates is as is easy, as, easy as anything, really. Station A coordinates, station B coordinates, the observed angle and the distances. And again, you can save them, clear them and, and call them back up again if you want to use them at another time. And uh, basically, that's free station. If we're going to um, going to go into resection now. Uh, I think I've saved these. Clear that. Call up. Yep. Again, with resection, I'm going to go straight into info. OK, this time here, we've got um, three stations coordinated A, B and C. And uh, we're set up here at X and we want to find the coordinates at point X using these three stations. This is probably one of the strongest uh, forms of um, stationing that there is actually using three stations. So there's no distances involved with this either. All you're going to do is you're going to measure the angle here, AB and BC. But what I would suggest is that you use more than just one round of angles. You want to use at least a minimum of three rounds of angles, face left, face right, to measure XAB and XBC. OK, then once you've got that information there, you can come back to here. You can put in station A chords, station B coordinates, station C coordinates. OK, we go on to the next page. Then we put in the observed angle XAB, observed angle XBC. And straight away, just go calc and there's your coordinates at point X. Simple as that. OK, go back to the home page. Choose procedure. I'm going to go into intersection now. I'm going to go straight to info. Right now, this at this time here, this is a little bit different intersection. Instead of setting up at point X, we we've got two coordinated stations here, A and B. We're actually going to set up at point A and backsite B to observe the angle ABX here. And then what we do is is again you'd use three rounds of angles. We'd swap over to B. And we back site A and measure, ob observe, I should say, observe BAX here. We've got this angle here. Once we've got these two angles, we can then find the coordinates at point X. So if we go back here, there's uh, your station A coordinates. There's your station B coordinates. There's your observed angle ABX and your observed angle BAX. Just once, once you've got those, press calc. There's your coordinates at point X. Now. Just to go back here, X here doesn't have to be a station that you're putting in. This could be a point somewhere that we can't really access. It could be a point on a bridge, underneath a bridge or something, or a, a, just a point that we need to get hold, of, get hold of to coordinate, but we can't get it for some reason. We haven't got a reflectorless instrument. We can't get a target up there. We can't get a retro target stuck on there. So a good way of doing it is, to, is by intersection. So we can intersect this point in to get the coordinates. It's quite a nice little, um, a nice little thing to get some coordinates, really. Okay, we go back here, and again, you can save these station A, A and B coordinates in there, then call them up and use them again at another time. Okay, let's go back to home, back to procedure. Okay, we go to uh, circle three points, straight into info. Okay. This time we've uh, we might have a, a shaft or, or something or a big steel tube pile that we want to find the coordinates at point X. It's hollow. We can't get in there. We don't know what the coordinates are that at this point is. 
So what we can do is we can get onto the circumference of uh, whatever the object is we, we want to find the coordinates of, and we can um, observe the coordinates A, B, and C. And uh, once we've got the coordinates A, B, and C, we can then find the coordinates at point X. Okay. So what we do is we do there. We've got point A coordinates, point B coordinates, point, point C coordinates. Once we've got those, press calc. There's your center point coordinates there, easterns and northerns there. And I've also put in um, a little bit of other data as well. We got the radius, the circumference and the area as well. So again, this is a handy little tool if you want to um, find the coordinates either on a shaft or a steel pile or, or, or an air circular area and you want to find out where the center is. And that's that. And again, you can save them if you want for some reason. Go back to home. Okay, we're going to go into whole circle bearing direction. Now, whole circle bearing direction is basically an open traverse without the coordinates. So, you're, the only thing that you're entering into this is your observed angles. And like a normal traverse, from your base station, where, wherever your station setup is, you need the, the bearing going from the station to the known point or the reference ob object, and then you put in your observed angles. And what you'd use this for is, um, is, is, as far as survey is concerned, is tunneling because you want to make sure that you, you, your tunnel's heading in the right direction. And to do that, you don't really need coordinates for that. that so you can quickly just crank in all your angles here to make sure that you're going in the right direction. So you don't, you, you're, not, you, you're bearing from your known point, your station's set up there, and then you'd be inputting all your observed angles here. So again, you just press calc, that would lock there. And then you, you this would automatically clear. And then your um, whole circle bearing direction is there. Then you just carry on putting in your angles and it would go 0 0.1, 0 0.2, and just keep increasing until wherever you're finished. Again, you've got a print function here, which would list all those whole circle bearing directions all the way down here. Okay, and there's not really too much to say about that either. Um, again, you can save the actual bearing to the known point in there so you can call it up again at a later date so we go back to um, home screen now we're going to go on to HPC leveling and that's it exactly what it says it's just height point collimation level leveling really um, you just enter your benchmark into here you enter in your staff observation here um, obviously your first observation is going to be a backsite so this uh, radio button there is by default is set to backsite for your first observation you press calc, it'd work out your HPC in there. It automatically saves the benchmark into the actual uh, program. So again, you can call it up at a later date and use it again, or you can clear it and put a new one in, then it'll automatically save that again. So the next observation is gonna be, uh, we'll just put an intermediate site there, I don't know, um, 1.326. Okay, so it's gonna be an intermediate site. Press calc, give you the reduced level, Put another one in there, 1.365. Okay, that be the last site, be a four site, go calc. Again, you get your reduced level there. If we go to print, and what it'll do is it'll um, list all your all your reduced levels all the way down to wherever you've finished. And uh, we go back to that. There's not really too much to say about this. It's as easy as anything. You just enter your, your staff observations there and just select which one it was. Uh, but if we go to here, steady tachyometry, um, this is for horizontal sites, meaning that um, there's no um, um, vertical angle used on here, so you'd be using a, a level for this. This is to find out the distance from the center of the leveling instrument to the face of the staff there. Um, so if we just enter this here, that would be 1.5. And we put the uh, lower stadia hair reading here, which is 1.3. Four three. Oh, here we go. And then we just press calc, and there's a distance, fifteen point seven meters. Um, obviously, you don't use the middle hair, so it's only the upper stadia hair and the lower stadia hair here to get the distance. And again, you can use print there, and it will just list out the distances all the way down here. We can go back. Uh, go back to HPC. If you press the reset button, you'll reset everything here and on the stat tack as well, it'll reset. Go to home. 
go to level stakeout. This is one of my favorite ones here. This is, um, there's a, a variety of things we can do on here. Um, if we just go to two levs for now. So what, what I've done is I've got two levels here. I've got level one and level two here and a distance. Okay. And what I want to do is I'm going to find out the information in between these two levels here. So I'm just going to press calc. And there it is. It gives me all the, the information I need to know. So it's a gradient of one in five. There's a rise and fall of four, four meters. It's 20% incline. That's the angle of inclination there. There's a cross fall of 200 mil per meter. And it's got a slope distance of um, 20.396 there. And the height difference is basically the same as the rise and fall. But what I can do at this point here, if I want it to go the opposite way, I can just do a swap there and it swaps the boxes. And we can go calc. And I've got to put input a distance there. I can put 20 in. Okay, that. Go calc, and uh, basically it's, it's going to work everything out from from there on now. So if I was to put the next distance in here, if I said uh, 12 meters, okay, and I'll, I'll go calc, and then it will uh, it will work the difference going down the slope there. But now I've I've set it swapped the levels around going down that slope. That's it. I can't I can't change it now. I'd have to go back and do a reset and swap them back. But it doesn't really matter now. I can just keep putting whatever distance I want in there now. So it could be 56 meters. Okay, we calc and it worked the level out going down the slope at that at that point there. So it's gone right down to uh, 4.8 meters and there's a slope distance of 57.109 and if I was to go to print there it, it will uh, list all everything going down here so, so it give me the distance level at distance 12 13.6 level at distance 56 meters there and there's a the slope distances there the good thing about this is uh, it's very good um, for doing uh, for doing batter rails or slope stakes if you want to call them that so if I put 12 in there and in here, I'll put uh, 16, put a level of 20, uh, sort of distance of 20. Go to two levs, gets rid of everything else. Go calc. Then I'll just keep putting the next distance in, keep putting the next distance in. And it'll just keep working out the, the, the level at that distance plus the slope distance. So good for slope stakes. Um, if I just go uh, reset here, it could be that I've got a, I've got a grade and a level so if I go here I can put a level of 12 in and if we if I remember rightly the grade from the previous calculation was 5 and we'll do a distance of 20 and I'll go calc here and it will give me the basically the same information so it's a rise and fall of four. the level at distance 20 remember was 16 20% 20 incline angle of inclination is that cross ball is that it's just the same and I can just keep putting in the distance and it will just keep me giving me a level um, the same all the way along and that works out for all of these I can put the percentage here if I look there there's 20% there I could put that 20% in there the distance and it'll give, give me the same if I could put the angle of inclination in there that there goes into there and it gives me the same it doesn't matter what I do which one I use I'll always get the same um, one more thing to say about these if, if you want the slope going on a on negative for this one you just put in um, you put in a negative grade here so That'll be minus five. That'd be twenty. Twenty here. Okay, that. And calc it down. And th and there it is. It'll work it down as a negative slope. So you're going down the slope. So the level at distance twenty has gone down to eight meters from there. So, and that's the same for the percentage. You just enter that as a negative. But the angle angle of inclination there. If you if you used to do it with that, you you obviously wouldn't put a negative angle in there. You put the distance in as negative. But this one here, x4 again is a negative. But the distance goes in as a negative for the angle of inclination. That's just one thing to remember there. Good for doing drainage, pipe runs, um, and as, a, as I've already said, slope stakes or batter rails, as some people call them. And uh, basically, um, that's all I can say about this for now. Um, I, I hope this is okay for you. Um, thank you very much.